do you have a dishwasher that just runs non-stop no matter what well if you do then this video is going to help you out I'm going to show you how to fix it so a few days ago I went to do the dishes I loaded it up like normal picked the uh, mode that I wanted it to wash in and press start and I went about doing my daily stuff and a couple hours later I kind of walked through the kitchen and noticed that the dishwasher was still running and I thought man that's kind of odd so I pulled it open I opened the door and it stopped and I looked in there everything looked normal and I closed the door again and it started up again just like it would any other time and I thought man that was kind of weird so I kept doing my daily stuff, went out in the garage, worked on some stuff, came back in about an hour and a half later and the dishwasher was still running. So at that point I knew something was going on. So on uh, older dishwashers and some new dishwashers that are kind of cheaper, you actually have a timer motor. And uh, it's a, a part in there that actually has a mechanical timer that turns and there's ways you can check that. Well on these newer ones it does not have a timer motor, it has a circuit board. So I'm going to show you how to figure out if your circuit board is bad or something else is going on. Uh, first thing is, is if you go to open, if your dishwasher is running constantly and you go to open the door and it doesn't stop, then you're probably looking at a door switch issue because there's a switch on the latch on the door that tells the machine that the door's open and to stop running. Um, but if your machine's just running non-stop, that's where your timer motor comes in. So, let me show you what we got. The first step to repairing any appliance is to make sure it doesn't have power. So on a dishwasher, most of them are hardwired in, so you need to gonna go to your breaker box and find the breaker that's labeled for your dishwasher and turn it off. Then when you come back up, you wanna make sure that the machine's turned off by opening the door and making sure that it doesn't come on when you press the buttons. So my dishwasher is a Frigidaire. It's a newer model and it's got the controls right up here on the top of the door. Uh, so it's a digital controls. Now I've already taken mine apart to diagnose the problem and I've kind of put it back together without the screws just so we could get through this really quick because I hate it when a video goes too long. First thing, you're going to lower the door. There's going to be four Phillips head screws, two on this side, two on this side. And you're just going to take those out. And that is going to loosen the front panel. And to take this front panel off, once you've got those four screws, you push down and pull it out. That's it. Now, the next thing you're going to do We're gonna, we're gonna need to get this this part here out. And the way that we're gonna do that, again, I already have this loose, is there's some T20 screws right here, three of them here, one, two across the top, and three again on the other side. Once those are loose, this whole panel tilts down like this. Now once you've got this panel tilted down, get yourself a little kitchen chair here so you can sit this on your knees. There's going to be two screws, a Phillips here and a Phillips over here. This tab on the front is just clicks in, so you can just pop that up and pull this out from here. Then when you open this up, your wire harness, kind of, there's a grommet here, tucks into this little tab that cover out we don't need that right now like I said I had this kind of loosely in here so this is what it's gonna look like when you open it up uh, this ribbon cable if this just pulls out this one just pulls out this just pulls out this pulls out and then you got these two connections over here that pull out now once you got that loose, you're going to have this loose from the machine. So once we've got this out, you're going to have a couple of screws around the sides 
Phillips screws, no big deal. Just uh, unscrew those screws and then take your circuit board loose from the panel. Now, uh, with, with the timers and stuff, you can take a multimeter and run a bunch of tests and figure out what's not working. With the circuit boards, 99% of the time, um, you're going to be able to find a physical problem with the board. So if you guys can look, this side looks fine. We flip it over, and this is our issue right here. So this area has been subjected to heat. The biggest killer of any kind of circuit board and our electronic device is heat. So you see how the rest of this is even color. It's nice and green. There's really no problems. But then when we get to this spot here, we've got a big brown spot where it's overheated and I'm going to show you the new circuit board so you can kind of see the difference so that being said that that's really all the diagnosis there is to these digital ones you're looking for an arc mark or a heat mark or something like that so here's the new one um, different color but we've ordered this through uh, an appliance repair place here in town and they say this is the replacement I hope they're correct either way um, this is what we're working with but you can see that the new board is, is even color there's no burn marks it all checks out so that's it and to put this in, you just reverse your install or reverse your removal. You're going to screw this back onto the board, put all your plug your things in, and hook it all back up, and you're good to go. Hope I helped somebody out. See you later.